All right, so top of page 38. It says, but the ships couldn't aim their guns high enough to hit the hilltop. Ha ha, you missed. Bam, boom, blam, bam. So General Howe decided to take the hill with our troops. An easy target. It wasn't so easy, was it? I'm getting to that. 2,000 British troops crossed the harbor for the attack. Howe's troops came right up the middle and charged Breed's Hill. Charge! The first charge failed. There were 1,000 rebels snipping at them, oh, excuse me, sniping at them from the top of the hill. Hey, let me tell it. That first charge was only a test. A pretty deadly test. The second charge was a test too. Charge! By test, you mean failed attempt? Oh, quiet. The third charge took the hill. Charge! Do you know why you won on the third charge? Superior tactics. Charging uphill into enemy gunfire is your idea of superior tactics? We won, didn't we? The British took the hill because the Americans ran out of ammo. Don't shoot till you see the whites of their eyes. Nonsense. They ran because they were beaten and terrified. There were over 1,000 British casualties. What's a casualty? That means wounded or killed. <gasps> wow, what a slaughter. But we won. The Americans retreated down the back of the hill. We had less than half the casualties the British did. But we won. Hey, not fair. I was telling this story. You did tell it. I, it, um, I just helped with better pictures. Ugh, enjoy your pictures now. Captain Hale isn't going to be around much longer. So really quickly, just to kind of paint a picture, at the top of the hill, if we look at this picture, where all of the rebel soldiers and all of the lobster backs were down at the bottom. And that's a really bad idea because um, as, the rebel, as the British soldiers were going up the hill, the rebels up the top were easily able to aim down and shoot at them. So a lot of the British soldiers ended up perishing, meaning passing away or being a casualty. Okay, so what was so important about this dumb hill? It was tall enough to shoot Boston. If you controlled these hills, you controlled Boston City and Harbor. Boston was the British's army's base. We wanted to keep them pinned down. So see the hills? If you controlled the hills, you controlled Boston City. Trying to keep them all in one place, eh? Exactly. It was called the Siege of Boston. <gasps> Ooh, sounds dangerous. It was. We had our army spread out blocking all roads into Boston. Some siege. If you had the land, but we ruled the sea. But we kept you in Boston for a little while. For 11 months. 11 long, muddy, cold, hungry, nasty months. Winter Hill, 1776. This is miserable. Why couldn't we be stationed on Summer Hill? <laughs> that was a good one. So hungry. I wish we had some supplies. Why wait for supplies when we can make our own? We've got some stone shoe stew. Oh. Who wants them? I do. Yeah, I'll take some. Captain Hale, they just attacked our base in Roxbury. Roxbury? We just left there. You just missed it. They blasted us with artillery for hours. Here are your orders. We're ordered back to Roxbury on the double. Any food there? Can't be any worse than here. Here's a sign that says Roxbury. Doesn't look any worse than when we left. It might be, it might even look better. Captain Hale, we're glad you're back. Everyone is deserting. Washington's army is shrinking. Deserting means when people would stop and literally leave base. Like they would just be like, I'm done being a soldier. I'm leaving. And so that wasn't a good thing for Washington's army because a lot of people were growing very tired and wanted to leave. Ha! There are no deserters in our army. Many of the British wanted to desert, but they were stuck in Boston, freezing and starving. I joined whatever side offered me a big, juicy steak. Don't talk about food. It just makes you hungrier. Back to work, you. Finish tearing down that wall. We need it for firewood. Chapter 5. 
Captain Hale, Captain Hale! What? Is it an attack? No attack? No, it's a miracle! Ooh, I wonder what the miracle is going to be. The regiment is saved! We won't starve to death! Look over there! It's a cow! It's a miracle cow! Can we have it? It's not ours. Uh-oh, get down! Boom! We're under attack, stay down! But my dinner's out there. Hold on, girl, you're coming with me. Moo! Sarge? Boom! No! Oh no, the cow got it. Oh, that's terrible. Dear Diary, I saw a cow blasted to bits today. <laughs> Calm down, Sarge, it's all right. But she was my miracle cow. We all miss the cow. They're there. Will this siege ever end? Poor miracle cow. Well, did the siege ever end? It did end. How? The guns of Port Ticonderoga. <gasps> oh, chapter six. This story starts with a group called the Green Mountain Boys. <gasps> were they a musical group? <laughs> no, they were a military unit. Hangman's right. It sounds like a singing and dancing group. Oh gosh, I guess this is their, they're trying to sing. It says, oh, we are the Green Mountain Boys. We like to play with toys. We dance and make some noise. We are the Green Mountain Boys. It says, finish. Oh, thank heavens. Yeah, we're done. The Green Mountain Boys were led by Ethan Allen. He has two first names. <laughs> Ethan and the boys had one goal, to keep shelter out, settlers out of Vermont. Get out or I'll burn it down, especially New Yorkers. He hated New Yorkers. Hey! <laughs> it says, go now and complain to that darn scounders, your governor. I'll send his troops to down under. Wow, he really didn't like New Yorkers. Which side was he on? He, oh, it says, sounds like trouble. He was on his own side. He caused all kinds of mischief. There was an open warrant for his arrest with a hundred dollar reward. Oh, sounds like a weirdo. When the war broke out, Ethan Allen and the Green Mountain Boys joined the fight against England. Dirty Brits. And then if you read the sign, it says enemy list. Redcoats, New Yorkers, settlers, governors, and then go gophers. <laughs> it says we'll run them out, all of them. That's when an American colonel named Benedict Arnold showed up. Mr. Allen, do you know Lake Champlain? Better than any man alive. Well, Fort Conderoga, Ticonderoga sits on the edge of Lake Champlain. It's a British fort. But right now, the British are focused on the siege of Boston. I have a brilliant plan. We could capture that fort. Well, yes, that was uh, my idea. Whose idea? Uh, er, it's a good idea. Whoever had it, uh, I will command this mission. Who will? Uh, well, we'll share command. Hmm. Early on the morning of May 10th, 1775, the Green Mountain Boys, led by Ethan Allen and Benedict Arnold, crossed Lake Champlain to Fort Ticonderoga. Shh, we want to take them by surprise. It looks empty. Shh. There's one sentry. Quietly, quietly, charge! Huh? Who's in charge? Where's your commanding officer? We request his immediate surrender. Come out of there, you darned old rat. We hereby request that all arms and material be requis... This is get out or we'll kill everyone in this fort. Yes, yes, we surrender the fort. About time. I surrender Fort Conderoga to, to me, Ethan Allen, and the Green Mountain Boys. Yeehaw! Actually, to me, I'm the high-ranking officer. Let's claim our fort, boys. Woohoo, our own fort. Wahoo, yahoo. Where did you find these troops? 
Ugh, Vermont. Fort Ticor Ticonderoga was the first American victory of the war. What happened to the Green Mountain Boys? Well, after they liberated the fort, they found the liquor storage and liberated that too. We are the Green Mountain Boys. Hey, look, they are singing. <laughs> Ethan Allen was so pleased with his victory that he took the Green Mountain Boys on a new quest. Take care of my fort, Benny. We're going to capture Montreal. Ugh, good riddance. He wanted to capture a whole city? He's a crook. A kook, excuse me. He did, he did this before. It should work again. We'll cross the river at night and sneak up on him. Shh, quietly now. Come on out, you darn dirty rats. Fight for it, boys. Bang, pow, pew. Ethan Allen, do you surrender? Never. Bam, crack, boom, pow, pow, wham. Now do you surrender? Oh, all right. So let's pause there. What happened to the Green Mountain Boys? Did they win their second siege? Did they win their second chance to be able to take over a fort? Correct, they were unsuccessful. The first time they were successful, the second time they weren't. Totally agree. <laughs> they celebrated too early, that's hilarious. Okay, Ethan Allen spent the next few years on a prison ship. Come out, you rat. That's too bad. He was funny. A dangerous agitator. He belongs in prison. What about that other guy, that uh, Benedict Arnold? Oh boy, that's a whole different story. Give us the short version. No, no, don't get me started on Benedict Arnold. He needs his own book. What? Was he super good, super bad, famous? What? All three. But his part in this story is finished. Now back to Fort Con Ticonderoga. So real quick, Benedict Arnold ends up being a traitor and going to the British side. So um, now you can use Benedict Arnold as an insult. Like you could, if someone was like your friend and then they betrayed you, you could be like, oh, you're such a Benedict Arnold. Um, and so the Benedict Arnold became famous for the wrong reasons. He became one of the biggest traitors of the revolution. And that's why Nathan Hale was like, oh, that guy needs his own book. Cause there's a lot of stuff that Benedict Arnold did. Chapter seven, right here. And it says, welcome, Mr. Knox. I'm Colonel Hinman. Take me to the guns. I want to see them all. Hey, it's that chubby kid with the missing fingers. Yes, it is. Henry Knox. Open the gates. Show Knox our firepower. Oh, boy. Holy cats. There's so many guns. Close to 80 in all. Some are rusted. Some are buried. But 78 are ready to roll. I'll take 60. Washington needs these guns for the siege of Boston and soon as soon as possible. Too bad spring is still months away. I'm not waiting for spring. I'll take them now. But it's December. The lake is almost frozen over. Boston is over 300 miles away. Oh, look at these beauties. These are long range. If we mount them just right, we could shoot right down into Boston Harbor. We'll blast them out of Boston. 60 cannons won't travel 300 miles through the ice and snow. <gasps> sleds. We'll take the guns on sleds. Sleds? Really? Do you have any idea how many, how heavy these are? Down to the last ounce, this baby here is about 5,000 pounds. She's 11 feet long and can fire a 24 pound ball about a mile. I'll name her Lucy. I used to only read about guns like this. Now I actually get to fire them. 60 cannons, wheels, carriages, and shot plus powder equals about mm, 60 tons. There's no way you can haul 60 tons of heavy metal across the gorge and the Hudson River in the middle of December. Well, I've got boats planned for the lake. We better hurry before it freezes. But, but, 
then I've got 80 oxen to pull this